Today, I'll be traveling from Incheon to LAX on Korean Air in their 777 in their first class cabin. Hello, YouTube travelers, and welcome to the Gentlemen of Fortune channel. Join me on my travels around the world, and together we'll review the latest in flight and lounge offerings, find out how various airlines' first and business class products stack up, sample their catering, and indulge in their finest champagnes. Together, we'll experience the best of the best, and maybe some more obscure ones too. So be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. And now I invite you to sit back and relax as we get this next adventure underway. I have a couple hours before my flight, so that gives me plenty of time to check out the lounge. If you'd rather jump straight to the flight, you can move ahead to the 6 minute mark. Whoa, look at this beauty. Sadly, I won't be flying on one of these 747-8s today, but instead on the 777. Hopefully as more countries relax their restrictions, Korean Air will bring these back into service. At the moment, there's not even enough traffic for them to have the first class lounge open, and we're relegated to the Mylar Lounge, but we'll take a look at that today. As you can see, there's lots of seating spread across several distinct seating areas. I'm one of the few people in the lounge today, so as you can see, there's no issues with capacity. There's not a lot of different choices for reading material in the lounge, unless you want to get a jump start on reading the in-flight magazine. Down this hallway, they have relaxation rooms, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Over here, we have a sort of sterile looking dining room. And more seating areas. Over here, we have a limited selection of self-serve beverages. They have all the basics, soft drinks and beer, but nothing really befitting a first-class lounge. There's a freezer dedicated to Haagen-Dazs ice cream cups. We've got some pretzels and peanuts. And over here, we've got a couple bottles of liquor to make cocktails with and soju. At least they have some Prosecco on offer, so you can get some pre-departure bubbles. And there's a couple other wine choices as well. Let me know in the comments section which wine you think would pair best with these spicy cup noodles. Continuing on this way, we have hot water for the soup and tea, and we also have some coffee machines. As we make our way through the lounge, you may have noticed that the food options have been pretty slim. They do have a menu, and it offers a choice of two different doshirak, which we'll take a look at in a minute. Beyond the kitchen area, there's another little section where you could relax and get a little bit more quiet time. This section is in addition to the relaxation room which we saw earlier. In there you have individual privacy screens with reclining leather chairs, some of which have a massage function. Now as promised, here's a look at the menu with the two Dosharek options. There's an Eastern and a Western version on offer, and for your viewing pleasure, I selected both of them. First up, we have the Eastern Dosharek. Starting in the top right there, you've got the fried chicken with the sweet chili sauce and of course the cornflakes. Then in the middle, you've got the gimbap with bulgogi in it, and then the glass noodles on the left-hand side. And for the Western option, there's a nod to the California crowd with the avocado toast, which is complemented by the roast beef sandwich in the center middle and the roast veggies on the right hand side. If you're connecting in Incheon, you might be interested in the shower facilities. They've got, I think, four different shower rooms available. I found them to be clean and inclusive of everything you need to get freshened up.
Of course, they offer a variety of amenities in case you've forgotten anything or just don't want to rifle through your bag to find it. There's also a hairdryer and fresh towels for you. Here's a look at the toiletries they offer in the shower. There's also a padded stool for those that like to sit at the vanity while they're getting ready. I'm always impressed by attention to detail, so I thought that having the Teguk logo woven into the bath mat was a nice touch. There's also a little closet area that could be easily overlooked where you can hang your clothes while you're taking your shower. Now that we're all freshened up for our journey, let's head out to the gate. Here's the Korean Air 777 that will be taking us to Los Angeles today. There's a dedicated jet bridge for first and business class passengers that leads to the L1 door. Unlike some first class cabins, Korean Air has overhead lockers, so there's plenty of room for your carry-on luggage. Now let's take a look at my seat. I'm over here next to the window in 2A. Right away I can see that a variety of amenities are waiting for me at the seat. And stacked up down there on the ottoman, we've got a comfy blanket as well as a pair of pajamas for lounging and sleeping in. The seat itself is in a striking robin's egg blue color. It's spacious and features supple leather armrests. The design aesthetic of the suite is complemented by rich burled wood accents. Close at hand we have controls for the seat as well as a light switch. Up front we've got a small storage compartment. Back here, underneath the flap, we've got the controller for the IFE, as well as an additional complement of buttons that controls the seat. In the way back here, we've got a literature pocket, which also happens to be stored in a pair of slippers. Over here, against the aisle, we've got a very thin personal wardrobe, which is built into the door of the suite. Ooh, and what is that I see? Some Belle Epoque? Yes, please. Thank you, nurse. The welcome champagne is served with a package of mixed nuts. Since they provided me a bowl, I dished out my own nuts for a more refined experience. Now continuing our look around the suite, there's a personal reading light and more importantly, a personal air vent. Before long, it's time to blast off into a rainy Korean sky. Now that we're airborne, everything is smoothed out and we can continue looking around the seat. This burled wood flap here reveals the tray table and it is immense. This tray table is seriously impressive. Not only is the real wood heavy, but it's beautifully crafted. It's also big enough that you could have a guest join you at your suite for dinner. Now that we've got a work surface, here's a look at those slippers that they had stashed for us in the literature pocket. And here's a look at the first class headphones. I'm not familiar with AKG brand, but it must be a local Korean brand.
they appear as though they'll be pretty comfortable. The ear cups come with a protective covering. We'll have to put that back on later. Now here we have the menus for first class. There's a menu featuring Western cuisine, as well as one entitled Hansik Jongchong, which features more traditional Korean fare. Here are the Western dining options. And here's the set menu for the more formal, traditional style Korean dishes. There's also a beverage menu that details an extensive list of wines as well as other spirits and drinks. While we wait for the meal service, let's check out the amenity kit. The first thing you notice is that the bag is this translucent rubbery material, which is quite unusual for an amenity kit. Inside, it looks like we've got the normal complement of items, but let's take a look and see if there's any surprises. We've got the eye mask. Hmm. Have to take a look at this in a moment. We've got a dental kit and a shoehorn. Okay, now let's take a look at what's in this other bag. It's a collection of cosmetics from Atelier Cologne. Looks like we've got body lotion, aftershave lotion, hand cream, face cream, and lip balm. There's also this promotional card included. So it all comes in a unique rubber pouch, but nothing otherwise unexpected as far as contents go. A placemat has been set, and the first round of service items has been brought out on a tray, signaling the start of the meal service. I selected from the Western options, but since I'm opposed to foie gras, they suggested that I substitute with the traditional Korean appetizer. It was complemented by a sort of tangy mustard vinaigrette sauce, which was very tasty. The soup course featured a creamy broccoli soup, which I enjoyed. A fresh salad with crunchy greens provided a nice break in between appetizer and entree courses. For my main, I selected the steamed lobster with the champagne saffron sauce. Not only was the plating impressive, but the dish itself was delicious. Following the first several courses, this cheese plate was brought out to ensure that any remaining voids in my stomach were filled to ensure a solid foundation was in place upon which to layer the impending dessert stratum. I also tried some of the Sandeman's reserve pork, though I found it to be less to my taste than, for example, Graham's. And finally, for dessert, this caramel cream sable, which is really a piece of art, served alongside some haagen -Dazs. Since I connected onto this plate, and it's already been a long day, my intention was to have a good meal and then get a good night's sleep. So as I get ready, here's a look around the first class lavatory. You can see, it's got Hollywood-style vanity lights around the mirror, some more useful amenities, and most importantly, a good amount of space. There's even a padded bench that folds down that you can sit on while you're changing.
Now back at my suite, the flight attendant has transformed the seat into a fully flat, comfortable bed. Let's take a look. There's a thick, comfortable mattress pad, a plush pillow, and, owing to the personal air vents, a big, comfy duvet which you can actually use. Now here's a sense of the privacy that you enjoy in your sweet bed with the doors closed. I actually had a terrific night's sleep. The bed was luxuriant and I was able to maintain a comfortable temperature the whole night. I awoke to the sun rising over California and was just in time for breakfast. It started off with a cereal of choice as well as an interesting grape yogurt. Being a coffee person, I always rejoice whenever I can get a cappuccino on a flight. I was offered a selection of breads and pastries. And for the main breakfast meal, I was given an omelet with sausage, broiled tomato, potatoes, and everybody's favorite, breakfast broccoli. And then to finish up, just before our final descent, a plate of seasonal fresh fruit, and why not another cappuccino? Before I wrap up this video, I wanted to share with you some of the details on the pajamas which I didn't show you before. They're produced by Jean-Franco Ferre, and they have some interesting details, like these quotes embossed on them, to motivate you off to dreamland. As we overfly Santa Monica, with some beautiful views of Brentwood and the Hollywood Hills, I'll leave you with some closing thoughts. This was an excellent flight. The food was terrific. They had a wide assortment of beverages to choose from. And most importantly for me, the bed was phenomenal. When you get that kind of combination, the flight only seems like it's about three hours long, which makes it pretty manageable. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll hit that thumbs up button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell so you won't miss any future videos. As always, until the next video, safe travels.